your color is emitting a high-pitched noise. Oh! Yeah. That's us from the outside. I don't think that's the radio. So, ladies and gentlemen, and beautiful people, we're gonna be forced, for the first time, to use a rifle in this game. Or are we? Quick saving. The noise makes my stomach hurt. I think we just found dog. It's gotta be these things. I really don't know where it is. Turn the noise off. Puts dog in the cage, hiding downstairs. Oh, there you are. You jerk. Ooh, I can deactivate it manually. I like that. Also, t tinted reading glasses. I will get those, because it matters. Okay, so we're not going to use our rifle. Hopefully. A lot of wonder glue. I wonder if we need that. I hope we don't. Oh. There's multiple radios. Oh, this one is not bloody like the other one. Let's see what we have in this computer. Disengage contraband room lock. Prohibited items. Sinclair's prohibition list is going to be difficult to enforce and told him so. He claims we're getting an automated system that would confiscate items even the slightest bit radioactive or foreign and ship them back to the visitor's source address. Asked about items already in the villa, didn't mention the construction crew, and he dismissed it. Of course, no sooner than Sinclair gives his prohibition speech, his pal swings by the same hour, asking how, quote, hard-nosed, unquote, we were going to be, told me he couldn't guarantee he could keep me supplied if I didn't treat his, quote, friends, unquote, with uh, the same respect. Prick. In the system security installation, Sinclair installed a new system, uh, security system for visitors coming into and out of the villa. He doesn't seem to care too much about what they do when they're inside, only that we confiscate any personal items that could be dangerous or foreign and make sure we know who enters and who leaves. Asked him again about watching the construction crew. He said that was a, quote, villa matter, unquote. Great, that means the prick runs the show. And that's capital P as well. Hmm. As long as uh, there were no more accidents among the crews, that's what he cared about. Barely tucked my flask under the desk before he showed up. He gets that disapproving look when he sees the hard stuff. Hmm. Sinclair. That's a character. Get away while you can before he comes back. Don't worry. Ooh, got reading glasses. I'll go with the tinted ones. Sinclair visit. Sinclair did the rounds again today. Glad he left his ghostly entourage at the casino. Those walking light shows make me wonder why he's even got us on staff when they could blast us in a second. Otherwise, Sinclair turns a tight, uh, runs a tight ship. Good to see in these days and times. Don't know how smart he is trying to make a resort to escape everything in the outside world, but rich guys can make it happen, even ones that have been hit hard like Sinclair has. Nothing much to report, pretty quiet tonight, even the Puesta del Sol, or from Puesta del Sol. Imagine more is up in the casino, probably has more than enough with the guests coming in tonight, poor bastard. Set 
Morris. Hmm, okay. Set up the radio so I can listen in on the gala event when it fires up and left one out of the prisoners. If Sinclair doesn't want us to be too strict with the guests tonight, I may just toss the key in the holding cage with anyone we pick up and let them unlock the door when they sleep it off. In communications over here, set up the radio room downstairs to broadcast through the speakers. Don't want to miss tonight's performance. The receiver down there is stronger than the desk radios we have up here. Stash some supplies from the evidence room down there to celebrate once my shift is over. Way I figure it, the rest of the guards will be too busy to check up on me. So how do I get you out of there, dog? I need to find a key, don't I? Sunglasses are better than reading glasses. I'll go with those instead. Hey. He's just gonna stay there, isn't he? Unless we can find the key in one of these things. Vending machine code for 357 magnum rounds. That's a recipe. That's a crafting recipe. Super stim packs. That's gotta come in handy. And some buff out. I'm not addicted to it anymore. The grenades, yeah, we're not gonna use the grenades. Don't let him make me Dean's secret stash again. I hurt myself. Hurt keeps him away. Got another terminal over here. Got the weapons and mines in today, along with the shotguns and the ammo. Enough to defend the villa if trouble breaks out. Sinclair's taking the world situation seriously, even all the way out here. Maybe more so, because we're here. Hate to think if someone uh, got their hands on half the stuff we have stored here. Enough military ordnance here to turn the villa into a, a minefield. And there's the dispensers report. Dispensers are up and running, unlike most everything else. We've had few problems with them. I heard they had been part of some World's Fair exhibit Sinclair had seen. So he contacted the researchers about the dispensers to see if he could use them here. Turns out dispensers do more than supply convenience items. If there's an emergency or the threat of communist attack, codes can unlock ammo and repair kits for the dispensers. Stored backups of the codes in the contraband room, just in case. Well, I think that's what we found out. There's also a Sierra Madre armor over here. So we have extra repairs with this. Wait a minute. Oh, there it is. It's a light armor. So not my cup of tea. Well, ooh, Sierra Madre helmet as well. Okay. Now we're talking. I can fix it with my sunglasses, as you do. And this is just the armory of sorts. Found uh, the vending machine code for 308 rifle rounds in the toilet. Electric hot plate for ghost sight with jar of cloud residue. Do I want that? I got a lot of that. True police stories. Eh, that's not too bad. Oh, look. More plastic skeletons. In a bed that I can sleep in. Need to remember that for the future. This plastic skeleton was naughty. The purified water disappeared, unfortunately. Oh, no. It reappeared again. Because once it falls off the level, it gets respawned. Ilvantoma. And binoculars! Not that we're going to be able to see very far in this DLC. But, you know, it is something. And I like having binoculars, you never know. And a vending machine code for a weapon repair kit. This goes downstairs. Police station basement. Knew you would come below the cage. Down to where I am. Maybe you saw the letters I scratched on the villa walls. A little farther. Follow my voice. That's it. The one in the cage. 
dog. I had to lock him up. He keeps disobeying me. Yeah. Vending machine installation. Oversaw the street side vending machines installation today, all working, mostly because the casino crew was running the show. Finally complained to the chief about the machines. They feel like a, quote, company store, unquote. We only get a few casino chips with the paycheck, so we can barely buy anything. Chief says he's not sure the chips were Sinclair's idea. Only if we had any problems with the machines, let him know immediately. Search and seizure. After another, quote, discussion, end quote, with the Puesta del Sol crew, crew, told Chief it would be difficult to enforce the prohibition list, let alone the searches. Chief had the gala on his brain, said Sinclair put the construction of the villa more important than patting down the construction crews for liquor and cams as long as they didn't hurt anyone or each other. Got a little hot under the collar. Chief did too, told me to walk it off. This whole thing stinks. Chief's barely got time for me. Now Sinclair's turning a blind eye to things in the villa because his friend's running the show? Question mark. No more parking tickets. One good thing about this assignment, no more writing parking tickets. Sinclair's laid out the streets so narrow, cars can't even come into the villa. Resources being what they are, he may not want folks to waste gas coming here. Cuts down on traffic noise, too. Chief says it's more than that. Says Sinclair wanted the villa to be, quote, reclusive, unquote. Long as I don't have to worry about double parking snobs on Chrysler's gas hogs clogging the villa, I could care less. Wonder how he expects folks to get here, though. Seems extreme, even for privacy. I really like how this, like, because this is the cops writing. I, I like how they, they have a different style. Um, and the, the attention to how well things are written is clearly less here. But they still use the quotation marks, which I really don't appreciate because they're poorly used. Uh, but they are also poorly used in the other uh, up things upstairs. But still. Prisoner commands. Are you listening? From now on, when I talk to you, pay attention. I've left markers on your people. I find the three other callers in town, 8, 12, and 14. Get them to the fountain. Obey me, and you can all go free. Ooh. Either way, there's a radio somewhere. And I don't like it. We got a book for Grognak the Barbarian. That is for melee. Now we're not investing in, in melee at all. So it's not like I care about that. That's me there on the table. The disc. My voice. Can't take any chances, though. You may be some victim who simply stumbled down here. If so, can't let you let dog out. No. Not yet. If you're who I think you are, you came to fetch Dog. Use him to drag others here. Now I'll use you and that Pip-Boy you're wearing. You're smart, clever. The key to Dog's cage is simple. Take my voice to the cage above. Let me speak to the beast inside. Then you and I, we can talk. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's so well... P I know exactly what's going to happen. I'm not going to spoil it for you, naturally, but... That's so very... Very well written. Ooh, cosmic knife. Oh, no, yeah, we've seen... Oh, bonus limb damage. Yeah, we have a few of these, I think. I'm not really sure why it is a cosmic knife. I think there's a... a there's a... You see, there's more of them. There's a computer somewhere that tells us what this is about. But let's go back upstairs. There you are. Dog, back in the cage. What have we here? You weren't who I was expecting. I'm disappointed. Still, even if you aren't my intended guest, you take direction. Good. 
You can't have been an idiot to figure out how to release me from my cage. Or perhaps you are, with that leash on your arm, and the one around your neck. With our collars and manacles, why, we may as well be kin. The name carved on your chest, are you dog? The carving's a reminder for mirrors and for dog. Dog, who you heard coming in, howling and hungry, as always. I've been trapped in here for some time. Then you come along and let me out. So, you opened my cage for a reason. Now, I want to know why. In Super Mutants, brain damage is usually the result of prolonged stealth boy usage. That's the easy explanation. The one humans use. Pre-war technology. As if it's the cause of all ills, mind and body. I needed to come out of the cage to protect Dog. From clever humans. Like you. Do you see these wounds of his covering his skin? The bear trap on his arm. He placed his own hand in it. The name he carved in his chest. To remind him of who he is, he inflicts pain on himself to silence me. When all I try to do... <sighs> he cuts, hurts, and tries to murder me out of him. He won't succeed. Just makes me angrier. Dog is the beast. We simply change cages, like the ones here. And that explains who Dog was talking about in his ramblings. We're talking to God right now, by the way. It's right there. But Dog, the beast, was saying, the pain makes him stay away. Don't let him out, or something to that extent. I don't remember exactly. And that's exactly what God is talking about right now. Why did you lock yourself in the cage? No. Why did I lock him in the cage? I locked him in because I could feel him getting hungry again. There wasn't much time. If Dog roams, he gets into trouble. Eats things he shouldn't. Listens to others he shouldn't. So he's safer in here. We're safer in here. I hoped if I locked him in here, the one he obeys would come for him. Instead, I get you. The one he obeys. If you weren't expecting me, who were you waiting for? Don't play stupid. I already have to mind one child. You must have figured it out by now. The old man obsessed with the Sierra Madre, riddled with greed. Hoped you might be him when I woke up. All you are is his hand. You're the same kind of greed. Followed the radio, the broadcast, and now you're here, all confused. Not for long. You'll figure it out. Why do you say I'm the same as the old man? You're not him any more than I'm Dog. But that collar around your neck, you're an extension of the old man's grasp. Clumsy, perhaps, but a tool, yes. And once you get acclimated to the Sierra Madre, then you'll feel the same overpowering hunger the old man does. And then you'll be him, not just his hand. This old man, what do you know about him? Elijah. Human. Weak like all of you are. Feeling age circling him like starved dogs howling for blood. To me, he reeks of age and failure. And madness. To me, he is simply the old man. To Dog, he is Master. His name, meaningless. Running out of years, hopes and dreams running through his withered hands like sand from the big empty. And scorched by the sun. Scorched by the sun? The old man, this Elijah, tried to hold the sun in his hands. Arrogance was cast down for it. Icarus' crime was to fly too high. Elijah, 
Elijah wanted to bring the sun down to him. <laughs> Arrogance. I don't know that we can in ask any more of that, but that's because Elijah is Elder Elijah from Veronica's story. He's the older, uh, the old Brotherhood of Steel Elder that almost resulted in the annihilation of the Brotherhood of Steel when he was trying to uh, capture the power of the sun in Helios 2 or Helios 5 or whatever that place is called in the main game. That's who he is. And we can never, I don't think we can ever confront him about that. I'm not 100% sure. It's just left sort of unsaid, which is interesting because, you know, players can notice that uh, if they want to. I don't know. What is he doing here? Heard the call of the Sierra Madre, just like you did. Exactly the same way. Finds out it's more than a story. Comes to this shining, poisonous grail. This jewel of the desert. Dog knows him more than I do. Dog's always nodding, always obeying him, because he's weak and hungry and greedy for Master's affection. So you're the one who knows how I got to the villa? Of course I know. Even if I don't see it happen. Down in the cage, I hear echoes of the footfalls, the click of the collars. Every time I see one of you, I know exactly how you got here. You couldn't help yourselves any more than Dog can help himself. You heard the voice, the promise, and then you walked right into one of the old man's traps. Then, then Dog comes for you, drags you here. You brought me here to the villa. Me? You think I want to haul bodies around the wastes like a Brahmin at the whip? No. Dog does it. When the old man says fetch, Dog fetches. You were in a man trap, and Dog made his rounds and dragged you here. When, I don't know. But it must have been recent. Before the cage. I'm not a big fan of how this DLC like really tries to shame you for greed and all that. Oh, you heard the the you heard the the broadcast and you wanted money and all that. Especially because of the way I I designed this let's play. <laughs> like we didn't we went to the bunker first and then we had to figure out how to hear the broadcast so that the bunker would be open. It's about as anti what the game is trying to tell us as it gets. I really don't like that aspect because you know, there could be other uh, uh, other reasons for you to come here. Not just because you want money or anything. Why do you say that? I don't remember you. That isn't surprising. What is, is that it was when Dog was out of his cage. Free. Hungry. He knows not to eat anything he catches in the traps. After that, however, so he dragged you here, you got spared. Dog must have fed after you arrived. Once he was fed, that allowed me out of the cage and put him inside. Do you remember how long you were out? I don't remember. I only woke up when my pit boy went active. Must have already been in the cage. Already had the collar in me. You're lucky Dog didn't devour you. Otherwise, we'd be closer than we are now. Yeah. I had other questions? Of course you do. And so do I. You wouldn't have locked yourself in there without some sort of key to let you out. The key? Why, it's the old man. The one who brought us here. I hid the key on me so Dog wouldn't know. I just need the old man to show up so he and I can talk. If Dog was in control when the old man appeared, well, he would just do whatever he commanded, as always. And I can't have that. If you have the key in there, the old man can order Dog to open the cage. Dog obeys, yes. Why? Do you have some means of contacting the old man? I can play his voice, yes. I have an audio log from him on my pit boy You... Don't play it. If you do, I'll find a way to get out of the cage. End you. I'll murder you, crush your arms and legs until... 
Calm down. Follow me willingly. I won't do it. No, you wouldn't. If you did, you won't escape this place alive. I'd shatter every one of your limbs to splinters and leave you here. You think I'm afraid of your collar exploding, killing us? No. I'll leave you breathing, then keep walking until my collar goes cold. I'll prop your broken body in view of the Sierra Madre so you can see what you came to steal. Forever out of reach as you die. I can't convince you I'm not here for the Sierra Madre or the old man, so I'll prove it. Prove it? How? Words are worthless. I have the power to let Dog out of his cage. I'm going to prove it by not doing it. Hmm. No. No, you're not. Even though Dog's more docile, easier to control. You may regret this. This place. This place is where creatures like Dog can survive. The people that fill its streets. He is as vicious, more vicious than them. His hunger can help you more than I can. When I am in control, this shell is difficult to fight in. What do you mean? The inhabitants of the villa, they are difficult to kill. They need to be chopped apart, hacked on the ground, disintegrated if you can. They are difficult to kill, but not to devour. And Dog is always hungry. If he is with you when they fall, he will fall on them, end them. If I am with you, fighting will be far more difficult. Even if Dog is more helpful, we can manage. <laughs> I am not sure you belong here. No. You don't belong here. Yet, you came this far. And I'm not interested in remaining here any longer. I'll unlock the cage. All right, let's get you out of here. Very well. Lead on. God has given you the In My Footsteps perk. This perk grants you a bonus to stealth, as well as the ability to step lightly around placed traps. Toxins in the air in here. Really? That's good to know. We have a companion now. And I want you close. Of course. Murder's in our blood. <laughs> I want you aggressive. And in melee. If it isn't the clever one, what do you want? What weapons are you good at? Dog is better at the baser instincts than I. I merely have the brain for it. His sinew and muscle are difficult to move consciously. He's always hungry, clumsy, heavy. Yeah, that doesn't answer the questions. 